Alright, what is up PvE family? It's your boy PvE Crick. I'm back at it again with another video. And today I've got a very special video. Um, this is one of my favorite decks like in the game right now. And with me, I've got one of my best boys, my boy Cody Wojtek. He's like the mastermind of this deck. He, he actually got me onto this deck and I got my dad onto this deck. So, what's up my boy? Are you ready? What up nerds? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Hell yeah. So, the way this video is going to work... Um, since he knows, uh, he still knows a lot more about this deck than I do because he plays it a lot more. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the archetype itself mostly and just kind of read it off to everybody, so that everybody can more or less get an understanding of what the, the engine is supposed to do. And he's just gonna talk about the rest of the cards, you know, the text, what fits well with the deck or what doesn't. And and yeah, because he again he, he knows this deck better than I do. So starting off with the leader, we've got Android 18. Yeah. When you attack, you draw one, and you put you basically just put cards under your leader. Um, that's what the gimmick of this deck does. So once you have three under your leader, you can actually awaken. That's the alt condition for the for this leader. Nowadays, of course, we have like every leader has <laughs> an alt awaken unless you're like turtle school and you take your own life. So then you go to your backside, same on swing auto draw, place one under. But you also get to place an extra one under whenever you take a life. So that's that can happen on either turn, which is pretty good. And then on the bottom, you've got an activate battle that says you can take a life to get 5k for the battle. Obviously, um, Bandai can't make every deck broken, so we're not as good as Majin Vegeta, and it's not for the turn. But that, that you know, that <laughs> that's okay. Um, and then we, we do have a Z Awaken in this deck. It's called Android 18's XL Dance. It costs 1 and 3 Z energy. It's kind of hefty. But you, you get to it pretty easily. You are 20k base, so that is really strong. Um, you do get to Z-Stack um, some cards, which will come up in a second. And same auto, on swing, draw, place one under. And then, like, one of the strongest abilities in this game, <laughs> in my opinion, I think I think we both think that this is extremely strong and creates for some of the strongest turns, not only in blue, but maybe even in the game. So you, you, you pay three blue, you place three cards from under the leader, in the drop, and then you play one of the cards from under the leader, and the leader gains double strike for the turn. So getting to Curlin in 17, Curlin is deflectable blocker, 25k. When you play it, you untap an energy, freaking remove a card, not ignoring barrier, uh, untap your leader, and then he gains barrier until the end of your opponent's next turn. Like, this card does a lot. Like, even considering that you play for three, basically two. And then the second effect is... I you know I haven't really had this ever be relevant personally, but you do get to put an eighteen under your drop, uh, under your leader back from the drop at the end of the turn. Um, but yeah, I mean this this guy's in incredibly strong. Like I said, deflect dual attack blocker and barrier. Like um, on turns where you either need to be defensive or you know you need to get rid of a threat or you need to play something around like yellow, like let, let's say the new sin promo. Like this guy's incredibly incredibly good. And then Android 17 is is arguably arguably just as good when he comes into play, you know. He's deflect critical double, 25k, like also a huge body. When you play him, same thing, on top an energy and on top your leader, but then it gives your leader 10k for the turn, which it's incredible. It makes your leader really big. This is really good into things that, you know, maybe won't answer this card with uh with an auto. Or in, in games where you need to push with your leader into like let's say you you're playing against yellow and they vegetoed you, you know, your leader still gets to swing basically free of charge. So you make your leader huge. And then with this, the Bardock that we have in this list, you can continue on tipping your leader. And then the second auto as well, um, you put one on your leader at the end of the turn. So that's kind of it for, for the leader itself. Now for the engine, it's uh, for the engine itself, we've got this, this four drop. And well, actually, before I say any of that, you'll notice that we actually have quite a small amount of the archetype or the set cards in this and that is because while a lot of them are strong like the let's say the the five drop android 18 sr um they're not like i wouldn't say strong enough but there are better things you can be doing in this deck and the deck space is quite tight so you want to you know maximize your efficiency and good cards that you're playing in this deck because this deck is really tanky as you'll come to understand later and as I maybe show um, a quick sequence later so we are playing a very small amount of these engine here so 
First up, we've got the, the SR, Android 18 and Krillin, Deflect Dual Attack 15. Basically, when you have two cards on your leader, you play it for two, and then you play your Unison in Rest Mode with a marker on it. Just a really, really solid turn two play. Really good card. You're, you're hitting your opponent with a three damage on turn two, basically, which actually matters a lot because, you know, um, Alt Awakens will normally put you to six. Um, with this, you can kind of just put your opponent to five before they awaken, so you're, you're actually dealing damage to them um, before they get to awaken so it's it's just a really solid card then we've got the unison uh, this unison ha has a lot uh, basically it's a blocker with this leader plus two you draw one discard one and then basically you put one under your leader and at the end of the turn it will untap and then minus four you just remove something ignoring barrier to the bottom of the deck just it's just a really overall really solid unison you don't plus from it like something like hit or baby um, for example, but you do get to set up your, your engine stuff, you get to cycle, you get a blocker out of it, people will just try to chuck down unisons as well, so it, it'll end up drawing a lot of attacks in. It's just an overall really solid card that deserves a rare spot, and does definitely deserves a slot with the, with the SR in the deck. Then, we've got this Android 17. Basically, it's just a free negate when, when you're Z awakened. Um, you sack two from under your your leader to just play it for free. It's just It's just really good. Because... Oh, uh, hold on. I would like to point out something that sure. you just missed. Yeah, this card see. doesn't require you to be Z awoke. Oh, it doesn't? You can just use it. No. Oh my god, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, so that's normally how you defend your unison if they try to go into it on oh your my second god. turn. Is <laughs> you have the three cards under and you can just pay for 17 to keep your unison safe. Dude! I can't. Oh my god. Well, of course, I'm a Dragon Ball player. I can't read cards. <laughs> but. Wow. Yeah, it's way better now, isn't it? Yeah, this is a way better card now. Now I now I know you have this card at three, dude. What the? F I I literally thought. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend like I wasn't stupid and move on. <laughs> okay, so here's our super combo for the deck. It's not Vegeta, <laughs> because Krillin is extremely searchable. Because Krillin is based. Uh, That's yeah. why it's Krillin. <laughs> Krillin is for based. One. Look at him. Yeah. Look okay. at that man. He's punching. What's Vegeta doing? Hanging out being a chode, okay? He's never going to be as cool as Krillin. His wife's never going to be as good as 18. Krillin's clearly the winner. You know, Krillin is the most based and the most goaded character in Dragon Ball. I will I will always stand by that. So it's like, this, this card is incredible. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, we could have stopped at it being Krillin, but... And then we've got this Android 18. Uh, basically, 18 and the, this other one-drop Krillin, they do kind of the same thing for the deck. Just 18 is a top 5 searcher for a Krillin or an Android, blue 5 or less. And then they both have an ability that says, um, you just put it on your leader and then you burst one. Which is relevant because, of course, when you swing with leader, you tuck one. So, uh, bursting one lets you basically tuck two in one turn. Which is really good for that fast awakening. Krillin just draws on play. Um, so yeah, you've got, you've got these two cantrips. Um, I currently play them at 8. I think 8 total is really good because it, it means that you are pretty, really likely um, to see them within the first two turns, which is at least when you want to see them. Obviously, your your best curve is hitting one of these on turn 1 and then hitting the SR on turn 2. But obviously, that's not always going to happen, even though it'll happen a majority of the time. <clears throat> so, that's that's actually it for the, for the archetype. Like I said, very small. So now it's time to let my boy cook and tell you guys about the rest of this deck. All right, so we got this measureless strength here. It's 5-drop 18. You've probably seen this in, you know, one of the new currently banned decks. My boy Gamma ripped the goat. And uh, 21 also plays this. Uh, pretty much if you're a blue android, this card is in your deck. Uh, it has multiple purposes in those decks. In this deck, it's just a charge and a top 5 search for our 4-drop. Because, uh, spoiler, you need that to play the game. Uh, for most of your matchups, you really want to hit the 4-drop, and if you don't, f big feels bad. Uh, but this card right here, you can just ditch it, and you normally will ditch it. Uh, it has a double effect if you ditch it, because it's a blue android, you can just tuck it under your leader. So, um, it is multi-purpose in this deck, uh, but its primary purpose is to be a, a green charge for the card following it. Absolute release ball. This is the most cracked, like, no floodgate card in the game right now. Hands down, just there isn't a better no floodgate card unless you're just hard countering it. Um, this card can read untap an energy 
tell your opponent to go eat shit, and then play another attacker. That's what this card can read. Like, this card is actually just crack. Your opponent pays two to do a floodgate, you take a life and absolute it, you get an energy back, you push right through them. Sometimes it leads to playing the 8-drop oob in this deck, sometimes it leads to boarding another Goku oob, sometimes it leads to you just actually excel dancing them. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that this absolute release ball let you do, and if you just decide to pay one for it, you immediately refund the energy. So, free counter-counter, lets you extend, fantastic, broken card. And then we got uh, Ultra Instinct Goku's Kamehameha, there's literally no reason not to play this, usually end your turns with one up. This is something I try to tell people. This deck's really energy efficient. Uh, it's playing really okay cards for significantly under curve. And the Excel Dance is really powerful for its cost too. So you end up keeping this uh, Goku's Kamehameha for defense. Or if they uh, say no negates on your double strike leader swing, you just give them the old punish. Uh, and we got Heavy Kick Krillin. This is the other reason we charge the multi. Uh, absolute release ball and heavy kick were why we did that. We wanted access to these cards. Uh, heavy kick is just insane. It's it's searchable free 10k in this deck. It's really all I can say about it. And it's based, it's Krillin, and he's kicking. If you, if you look at the super combo, it's punching Krillin. And then the, the, the other super combo is kicking Krillin. So, you know, we got punch kick. Big shout to Parappa the Rapper if you played PlayStation. You know, I'm a boomer, so. Uh, so here we got Android 21 Secret. Now, this can actually, I'm not, I'm not going to, this is no cap. This is big no cap, guys. If you actually want to play this deck, this could be any good blue secret rare. I'm not kidding. This could be Hatch. This could be 21. This could be Beast. Uh, Beast actually leads to the strongest turn the deck can produce, but if you want to play Beast, that's on you. I, I've lost a lot of games from it. I've won a lot of games from it. I kind of think I like Hatch the most now, but it's really between Hatch and 21 for me. Uh, you can even play Divinity, which as long as you don't spend your one multicolor energy and you like extend your turn that way, Divinity is even really good in this deck. Uh, but 21, fantastic card. We already know what this does. Wipes the board, takes everything, makes them regret their life, and then gives you a bunch of life. So, I mean, if you do that after you Z-Awaken, you have five life. Your opponent usually can't kill you because you're a 20k base with five life, and you got Bean and, you know, all this extra defense. You're really hard to kill. And then we go to the two... Like, literally, if you did not buy this card, okay, if you did not buy Sun Goku and Oob, Newfound Journey, a.k.a. Batman for the <laughs> color blue, you are... Man, you are you are big goof right now, let me tell it's you. Like, you've made a, it's like, like a terrible course. mistake. Like $5 yeah, they've went up. Dude, they were like, they were like two or three bucks, man. You could have grabbed a set of these guys for for nothing. This card is busted as fuck. And half you guys won't even buy deodorant. You could have bought this ah! guy for the price of not buying deodorant. There you go. <laughs> but you didn't do that, did you? No, you went and decided that you were gonna go buy, you know, your mommy twenty one cards, and now you don't own Sun Goku Noob, the best blue card in the game. Uh, this card's actually just insane. If you're blue, you play it for one on three or more energy, which already means it's good because it's deflect dual attacker for one, and it hits leaders, and that's really what matters. It's a 15k. But it also has, like, bonus effects. Like, I could have stopped there. I could have said it's a deflect dual attacker for one that you play on turn three. And that would have been, like, good enough. That would have been like, well, that card's pretty decent. But no, this card actually has more attacks than that. When you play it, you, you bounce a 5-drop back to your opponent's hand, because I guess they didn't want to pay 5 energy for something. Uh, and then, the, the best part, you top 5 for an Earthling with a cost of 4 or less. And I don't know if you noticed. Uh, this deck has quite a few of those. The Super what? Combo, the Heavy Kick, the Android 18, and Krillin also is searchable. Here's Pilaf and Shu and Mai, those are searchable. And the best part, it can find itself. Insane card. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Censored Bean, moving right on. Uh, we, we don't need to talk about Censored Bean. Every <laughs> does. Your 20k base leader is the Awakened. Censored Bean makes you 25. Your opponent's like, fuck it, I'm topo at every turn. They don't want to bother with it. They just pass. Uh, Bardock Spirit Resonance. Now, this card, this card is actually goaded. Okay, this is actually the Hell best yeah. like the best way to close games because your opponent literally cannot account for it. it. It's just so cracked out of like nowhere. <laughs> So just to give you a quick rundown of how this, like, your turn will go. You'll swing while you're Z-Awoke, right? So 20k. They'll, they'll like, co oh, combo. Don't combo on it or whatever. It's whatever. It's fine. Then you'll pay your three. You'll excel dance. You'll play the 17, making your leader 30k. Your leader's going to restand and be double strike. And you can swing with the leader again. We'll, we'll assume that they, you don't have any reason to swing with 17 verse. But you can swing 30k with the leader. You can combo the Bardock, go to 35. You then Spirit Boost 2. This is free. This costs you no energy. Spirit Boost 2 on our plus 2 unison that your opponent's likely going to either have... And, and let's keep this in mind. If they commit their entire time killing your unison, 
Uh, they just lose. <laughs> you, they're probably losing anyways. So you're just going to beat the hell out of them. But if they're completely committing into it, it's pretty easy to defend between like Android 17, like your your actual negates. You can you can defend it pretty easily because 17 emergency defense is literally free, so no yeah. problems there. Uh, but you spirit boost too, completely for free. Untap your leader and gain 5k. Now it does turn off the double strike at, after that battle, so you won't have it. But you'll be now a 35k swing, and then this card is limit two for some reason. So you can just combo another one, and yeah. then restand your leader again and swing for 40. And this is like no comboed cards on the third swing. You can just swing for 40. So you, in the same turn, you can go 20, 35, uh, 40, 40, and it's just it's way too much. It's usually it's often going to close the game by itself. And that was for free. You spent no energy to use those bard off. It's very real estate. You excelled. Well, yeah, you, you, you danced, but you didn't, you didn't spend energy to bard off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for bard off of bard off. And uh, peel off shoe and Maya's card's goaded. Uh, get these right away. It hasn't even come cards. out and it's already goaded. Yeah, it's, that's not even come out. Just get these right away. <laughs> this card's broken. I mean, right now, this card, if you want to play the deck right now and you don't want to get these TPs because they're going to be like really expensive when they come out, you can just put like two of the Balma that's actually yeah. in the archetype in the deck yeah. here, and that's fine. Uh, you can put like a random negate, like Dimension Magic, something. You can put something in here. I like the Bulma. It's a 6k combo. Makes your one drops actual relevant attackers if you decide, well, I guess it's time. Um, uh, <laughs> Oob's pretty broken. This card's like really, really good. Uh, one of the things this deck was really lacking, and I, this is this is the biggest reason to run like 21 or uh, go on Beast, is board removal. It actually struggles keeping an opponent's board trimmed if they're playing outside of your like five energy uh, threshold. So uh, with that being the case, uh, Oob really fills that niche where you needed the board removal because he hits three guys. You're almost always dropping this guy for two. He's, I don't think he's ever not going to be two. Uh, there's no way your opponent's not going to have to like charge the energy. And if you just you can swing at them with your stuff, and if they never charge the energy, they're obviously not like playing cards from their Z deck. So you know, props to you, I guess. Uh, but, I mean, yellow has to have two because they need to have two up for Vegito or they have to have a battle card for Vegito. Like, they always have to have two Z energy, pretty much. So, with that being the case, Oob's usually live in the yellow matchup. And he's deflect double strike 30k that you're going to have board for two. Replaces himself immediately, which is already good. And then he yeets three of their cards into the Z energy and you can choose battle area or drop. You're almost always in this deck going to choose battle area. You've got no reason to give them more Z energy than they need unless you're activating his other auto, which then punishes them for you trying to use counters. So, you know, if, if his full effect is live, he's a pretty scary card because he, he automatically taxes you an extra card just to stop. Unfortunately, he's not searchable. We just take that where we can. And then 17 defending friends cards, just good. I mean, it's just good. We're a Z leader. We can play it. We don't even have to have the energy for it. It's a good card. Yeah, I've had that come up a couple of times. People will ask me, oh, but you don't get the effect. And I'm like, no, I have a Z leader. It counts that too. Well, that's because a lot of blue decks don't have Z leaders. Yeah. Or if they do, they suck. So this is one of the few blue decks, uh, besides Oob coming out, that actually has a good Z leader. So you do get to kind of like make your opponent be not used to playing a certain way. Like, oh, he's got no Z energy. He can't 17 me. Oh, no, yes, I can. Yeah, there's two cards we didn't talk about on the Z deck, but we don't really need to. Like, okay, Beerus. It <laughs> Beerus is Beerus, Cell is Cell, like, everybody kind of knows what they do. Um, you can also talk, I mean, Cody will also be talking about the side deck here, because, so, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, this deck is, this deck is extremely malleable. Um, like Cody said, if you, you know, if you want to play this deck, like, now, before you have pre-release, or before you have set 21 cards, like, you can just slot, like, any blue card. That There's a lot of space in the deck, and, yeah, I mean, this, this is, like, a really good um starter list for anybody which is the point of this you know this this should be generally as good as it gets almost but you know if, you know everybody's different you know people like to play different ways so this is a very good way for you to start playing this deck if you're interested and then from there on you can tweak it to your liking like, like i said again this deck is extremely malleable so you can do whatever you want with it but yeah we we've got some side deck options here that um you could talk about cody okay so the image that I have that you have here for the deck, he's got like one heroic prospect trunks. We've got the absolute release ball. We've got uh, some let the battle begin. That card's really good. I often side that in if I'm running it my side. I don't always side it. A dimension magic. Now people are probably like, why isn't that card in the main board? <laughs> I mean, look at the main deck. You actually want to get to combat. I mean, you don't really want to be hard negating your opponent much unless they're attacking the unison. And if they're doing that, the unison's already acting as like three to four negates anyway. So you don't really care. <clears throat> uh, dimension magic is good. You do want access to free life negate. 
because sometimes people won't hit you and they'll keep you from getting the three and you'd like to have that one extra life take so you can like trigger your life take on your turn uh, so you've already done it on your opponents and they're gonna like pass and leave you at four uh, you'd like to have the ability to like negate another or negate one of their swings activating the effect going to like going to three or going from five to four then on your turn you can swing and activate your effect going to three then Z Awaken. So you want to be able to at least get a way to go to three life, be it on the sideboard, if you know your opponent will prevent you from getting it. Like I've been recently citing just one copy of like Black Z Vegeta just so I can do it too, but I mean, either, either way is fine. <laughs> so we got a Heroic Prospect Trunks, good card. Uh, two more Spirit Resonance. The only reason to play more Spirit Resonance is to kill 21, because honestly, that's your hardest matchup. Like, realistically, is uh, Evil yeah. 21. That's really, really rough. <laughs> sometimes, though, you do just kill them with your leader. Like, you, you don't... You do just sometimes kill them with your leader. Bardock really lets you kill them with your leader. Uh, Quill and the Cunning is also good in that matchup, so that's a card that I'd side. Like, realistically, the sideboard can just be, like, Bardock and Quill and the Cunning, and then you can do whatever you want from there. Yeah. Uh, I don't really like Burning Impact. You can play Tapion, uh, the one that um, you Spirit Boost, you play it, you draw a card. Uh, that's a good card. It's 20k double striker that you play for one. You've got a whole bunch of other good cards you can play. You can even do some jank stuff like like your dad was trying to do where you go. You have all these four drops that you're playing for like one or two oh, that path. you can swap path to the infinite and then just straighten the UI. I mean, you can do stuff like that too. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually a perfectly fine strategy as well. It's definitely better than some of the other variants I've seen in the stack. You, know, you, you have a whole plethora of stuff you can do. You can change so many things. Uh, the sideboard's super, super malleable. Like, you can put, uh, we well, can't put Dirty Burst here anywhere, but you can put, like, Beerus Destroys, you can play more UIs, you can put more Beans, you can play Baby Apes, or right now you would just play Goku Black. Realistically, there's no reason to play Baby Ape, I think, because you really don't want to have the extra 10k clogging up the deck when you're already running four measureless strength anyways, so probably just put the Goku Black counter counter in here because it works, technically. And that's only because it's a 5k. That's really the only upside to that card. Uh, you could play more extra cards and play like uh, Goku and PyCon Dead Heat. You do have a whole bunch of good choices, though. And one of the things that you can also also try is since you keep your drop so empty, at least for the first few turns, oh, no. you can consider playing another World Blitz. <laughs> and you can also play Nine Drop Cell. Uh, everybody loves Nine Drop Cell. It's actually cool in this deck because you can just charge it whenever you've got the multi. So the turn you want to play, just charge it, play it, push. You know, it's it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes you need the board wipe and uh, your opponent can't recover from it, so. There's just, there's so much you can do with this deck. And um, yeah, like, let the battle begin. And like, let the battle begin. Like, you, this is another card that's like, I think, you know, I think everybody knows this card by now because of Gamma and 21 and all that stuff. But like, just a really good defensive counterplay too, especially against, you know, if you go first on curve against like Majin Vegeta, you can like screw with their Goku, and, like really stall them out and then aggro them. Um, you know, a fourth release ball because yellow likes to, I don't know, play Riposte and Vegeta. Like, yeah, again, it's it's super malleable. Obviously, I'm not as experienced with the side deck yet. I, I don't have the creativity that that Cody does. I just kind of play whatever. But yeah, you know, he he mentioned some some a lot of options really. Um, like it's just it's just so fun, man. This deck is so fun. I've been enjoying it like a lot i handed it off to my dad because it's you know like we said it's malleable and he likes that sort of deck so he's been enjoying it too um he thinks it's pretty like above average and like we we we, we both think that you know it's like a rogue tier um deck you know it, it does really well when you know how to play it and you know what you're doing um you know into like the very tippy top of the meta like let's say let's just use majin vegeta as an example like i don't know i played against it today and while I can beat it, you know, while I when I'm playing the deck, I obviously feel like it's a little, just a little bit worse than what I'm sitting across. But because I know how to play around Majin Vegeta and like Yellow in general, I am able to beat it because my deck is still strong enough to be capable of that. So, um, yeah, where do you stand on that, Cody? I know, I know that you think the deck. I, I'm in the good. same boat with it. I think it's, I definitely think it's way better than anybody's given credit. I'm not going to give any names, but. Uh, there are definitely some people who have bashed this deck, and it's it's not warranted the amount of hate that it gets. It's definitely it's not super easy. Um, it definitely is very straightforward, but like knowing when and what you should be doing is is going to be what like separates you from the good players on this deck. Um, like the only thing that's like set in stone is your like turn one and turn two. And after that, you have a lot of options as to what you're going to do. Um, it, it gets really, really crazy, and your your ability to defend and how you defend 
is actually really important in this deck as well. So uh, I definitely put it in like a higher, it's like, if I were to tier it, if I were to actually tier this deck, it'd be like really high tier two. Um, like if, if, you, if you demanded that I tiered this deck, it would be <laughs> extremely high tier two, uh, probably like just fringe going into tier one. Uh, it, it may or may not get better with future cards, but it definitely doesn't need a whole lot. Um, it's it's very close to competitive. It was already doing well pre-ban list against a lot of the other decks in testing. So, I mean, with some of the other power decks gone, it should also be able to just compete a lot better now. Um, and it also, it, it really leans on that, that Excel Dance turn because it's so strong. Uh, and if you've never experienced it, Boy, it, it just kills people. It yeah, really yeah, does. It, it just really does. it it just slaughters people. Like you might not look at it on paper, but like that's not that good. But then you actually go through the motions. It's like okay, without Bardox, it's a twenty k swing. You know, on twenty k double strike swing, two twenty five k swings. I removed a guy and untapped one of the energy used. So you really spent two energy if you think about it to get two leader swings and a double and a dual attacking twenty five k that removed a card. And, like, that's insane rate. Like, that's crazy amounts of power for, like, two energy um, because they untap one. Uh, and even if you just go the Bardock route, it gets really crazy because then you spent two energy to get, like, four leader attacks. And, I mean, I don't know what deck is attacking with their leader four times for two energy, but, you know. Uh, reboot Gohan. Th th this, yeah, Reboot Gohan can. Yeah, <laughs> Reboot Gohan did that. But, you know, he's banned, so... Uh, so, so we have to compare a banned leader's power to this deck, just so you kind of are aware of how strong this <laughs> okay. leader can be sometimes. Yeah, I, I think that um, people... And, and I think it's mostly just because 21 released at this in the same set. You know, um, I, I, of course, I've, I've been judging events recently, and I will say that for both the May and the June event, literally, like, zero submissions for this deck. And, you know, there's only, like... Upwards of 192 people that play in them, of course. But to, to see zero of uh, such a new deck compared to, like, I don't know, three to four of a green GT Goku from the same set, which I thought was, like, not good, not bad, but, like, not good either. Like It's, it's, it's definitely okay. way worse than this deck. Yeah. And that, that's, like, that's yeah. really what, like, kind of boggles my mind with this, because this deck is way better than it was given credit like on release and really 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 like hopped on 21 and to be fair 21's a pretty popular character and i'm not i'm not really surprised at yeah. that but uh you know 18 dude come on put some respect on bay you know yeah it's, hey you know you've got you've got like the best girl on the show and you've got you've got the best man in the show man look you can't argue with that that alone should be like a reason enough for you to play this deck i don't i <laughs> You've got, you've got you to know, go to. VBS I know what I'm naming this deck. This the name of this deck is called Giga Chad's Wife. That's that's what this deck is. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, you know what? I can't even. You know, that's. I guess. I. You know what? I gotta. I'm, I'm gonna go in and edit this right now during the video. Where's the name? Where's the name? All right, here we go. Uh, Giga. What? Giga, Giga Chad's wife. Yeah, there Giga Chad's wife. Next, save deck. Easy, easy. There you go. Well, <laughs> well, with that, um, we've kind of you know finished going over this. I uh, I appreciate everyone for watching this video coming through. You know, again, these videos are a little bit longer for us to go more in depth, and I hope it helped. I hope that everyone has a better understanding of this deck now, and I hope that you will pick up this deck. Um, Cody, do you have any any last words? Anything to say? Uh, shout out to the cum chat. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, shout out to Juha Bach, the, uh, the final villain of Bleach, and we already know that he's strictly inferior to the main character Ichigo. Uh, shout out to uh, Juha Bach's backpack because of the amount of abuse it gets when it's held so tight. Uh, shout out to Kevin Rooks for being the green goat. And uh, sounding like what I'd expect Flowey from Undertale to sound like. What? <laughs> yeah, dude. Bro, oh my god, I hate you guys. Well, <laughs> with that, thank you everybody for watching. Apparently there's something wrong with updating my deck, but thank you everybody for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>